Amen. God is good. And all the time. It's so wonderful to see so many beautiful, wonderful faces. Amen. I think when this place completely gets packed, we're going to have the most beautiful church in the whole Tri-Cities. Can somebody say amen? Come on. That's a testimony to God's creativity in making you good looking. Amen. That's right. That's right. Holy and good looking. God is good. We are uh, challenging every person, encouraging uh, this Sunday. We have our Sunday services at 10 o'clock. And on Friday night, we have uh, night prayers where we pray here. We welcome everybody to it. And every Wednesday, uh, keep us in prayer. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, me and Ilya, by the grace of God, will be flying out to um, a country that is not very safe. And then we are going to fly after that to Nigeria with a group from the United States and some of the people from our church. And so keep us in prayer. We're believing we're going to come back with a uh, triple dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're leaving on a good note and we're going to come back on a higher note for the glory of God. Amen. And if we don't come back, we'll be in heaven. Amen. If you have your Bible, let's go to Genesis chapter 41. Because of the time that we have is very short. Um, we wanted to just go quickly and read the Word of God. Genesis chapter 41, verse 37. This proposal pleased Pharaoh and all of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this, in whom is the Spirit of God? Then the Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house. And all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards to the throne, I will be greater than you. And Joseph and Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in the garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. I want to speak to you on a brief message that will be called Incarcerated Prince. Let's quickly say this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your faith. Amen. I want to speak to you today about the Holy Spirit, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we subscribe to the doctrine that there is one God who reveals himself in three persons. He is one, and yet he reveals himself in three persons. We see that in the Bible, in the first pages of the Bible, where it says that God created man, and when he did so, he said the following, let us make man in our image. And us, meaning there is more than one, and so there's one God, but He reveals Himself in three persons. And this also proves the fact that we are made in the image of God because we have three in us. We have the body, soul, and the spirit because we're made in the image of God. Therefore, we reflect Trinity. We are a triune being reflecting a triune God. And so God the Father, we, most of us, we know, we pray to God the Father, we know God the Son. Jesus who came on the cross and died for us and who went back to heaven. But the third person of Trinity whom Jesus talked about on this earth and whom Bible talks about also, and Jesus said that he will come on this earth at Jesus' departure and take the place of Jesus in our lives. And it actually will be better for us to have Holy Spirit in us than Jesus with us. So all of us who are dreaming, you know, I wish Jesus could be around or I could, you know, have Jesus in my neighborhood. I would definitely be his follower. Um, Jesus says that you should start dreaming and start believing. That the Holy Spirit in you is so much better than Jesus with you. Holy Spirit is a person. From the story of Joseph, I want to draw a few simple practical lessons about the Holy Spirit and make it, bring it down to our level so that we can get to know him. We know the story of Joseph. Most of us know here the story of Joseph. He was a young boy who was extremely favored by his dad. And dad loved him and gave him specific special clothing. And his brothers kind of didn't like him because Joseph from the beginning knew he is destined to reign. He knew it's, it's, in, it's in his DNA. And he was not shy about it. From a very young age, he was very um, verbal about his destiny. 
And he told his brothers that I was dreaming that all of you guys will bow to me and I will rule over you. Now, if you're the younger and the, the younger brother comes with us, those kind of dreams, you will slap him. You will say, go vacuum or go wash the dishes. You know, shut up. Dude, you're the dreamer. What, what do you think you're doing? And so, but that's exactly what Joseph did. And then the Bible says Joseph started to report about his brothers to his dad. And he started to tell, you see, when, it's one thing when you start getting dreams. It's another thing when you start getting me in trouble. When you start reporting all of my mistakes, I mean, that just goes, no, no. And that's exactly what Joseph did in the house. Being destined to rule, he started in the house as a reporter. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Holy Spirit is your reporter. See, Holy Spirit is destined to reign our life. He comes from God into our life to rule our life. And when I say rule, I know you might be thinking of Hitler and Stalin, but that's not what rulership is in the kingdom of God but where we meet Holy Spirit in our lives is many times he comes into our lives or as a Christian when you become a Christian you give your life to Jesus Christ the first place or the first characteristic that you will experience of the Holy Spirit is when he begins to report your sins to you and that's exactly what Joseph did he started to report the evil that his brothers did. He was destined to reign, but he started as a reporter. And of course, we know the brothers did not like that. Instead of getting rid of their sin, they get rid of Joseph. And that's usually the tendency of Christians. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, when you get saved, the first thing he does many times in your life is he begins to create tension in your heart when you are doing something that is not right. He begins to bother your conscience. He begins to not give you peace when you're doing something and, and you don't like that feeling. And so sometimes instead of dealing with the tension, you remove the reporter. So you can live without that. What you do is instead of hearing that voice, you put mute on that so you can live your life without being interrupted by somebody else. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? And Joseph's brothers did exactly that. Instead of dealing with their evil ways, they dealt with their brother and got rid of him. And because they got rid of him as a reporter, they never saw him in the family as a ruler. Holy Spirit cannot rule my life if I don't submit to him as my reporter. Many of us like to hear God's voice. And usually that voice, when we, when we think about hearing God's voice, this is what we're thinking. Let me tell you a story of a young girl who got kidnapped. And when she, the way she got kidnapped is she was walking to her car and some men were walking behind and she heard this voice that said, they will kidnap you. And don't fight them. So she didn't fight them. They took her and they put her in their trunk. And as she is in the trunk, she sees that there is that, uh, what do you call that little thing in the trunk that you can open the trunk? The emergency exit. So she sees the emergency exit and she begins to ask the Lord, when do you want me to jump out? And the Lord speaks to her heart and he says, not now, not now, not now. And then she hears this in her heart. The same voice that said, you're going to get kidnapped is the same voice that said, pull the emergency thing she pulls it and she's about to literally jump out from the car and run toward the straight car and she hears the voice that says this car is following that car run from this car too she runs from that car goes into a neighborhood and literally the voice guides her inside this this thing inside it guides her which house to go to she finds safety two days later this man got captured now that is a powerful voice of god but if you will ask this young lady how she started to hear the voice of God like that, she will tell you. It didn't start with the voice of God telling her when to pull the emergency plug. But it started with the voice of God telling her to apologize to her mom. To do this, to do that, to stop lying, to stop cheating, or to stop doing that. When you pay attention to your attention, you're giving room for the Holy Spirit to grow inside of you as a reporter to become your ruler. Holy Spirit doesn't just take over your life and start to do supernatural things. He starts in your life young. Now He is God, but in your life He starts as a reporter. Means He creates a tension inside of you. And because we don't like tension and we don't like change and the pain that's associated with change, it's always easier to press the mute button. Get rid of the reporter so we don't have to get rid of our sin. 
You cannot know the Holy Spirit as He is if you do not know what to do with Him when He is your reporter. It was this week when a young lady received a breakthrough from a youth group that she could not get a job for a long time and then she, she got the job and on the same day she also received a check from the unemployment of over a thousand dollars, something that she's been trying to get for so many weeks and it just could not get through. And when she got that, she was just so blown away how awesome that is. And while that check came in, there came a still small voice said, a portion of this check doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And this young lady has never done that before. And so to look at the paycheck and says, I need to give certain amount of money that I could buy new shoes, a purse, or buy myself some new lunch or something else. Give this to God. That's just, that's just strange. But this young lady on Friday night brought an envelope and she says, with tears in her eyes, I need to do this. I don't know why. Just, I need to give this to God. I met with young men just recently with literally tears in his eyes and he says that for a few months I just had this tension in my heart. I have a jailbroken Apple TV. Apple TV is where you watch movies and jailbroken is when you can watch movies illegally for free. <laughs> and he says, and I've been having this, this tension about it for the last two months and, and I feel like I need to throw away the Apple TV because it's jailbroken. I was like, just get it, the jailbroken out of it and you can enjoy the Apple TV and he says I know now what I should do Holy Spirit has been reporting to me when you know the Holy Spirit as your reporter only then you can know him as your ruler and somebody say amen now the brothers of Joseph sold Joseph to slavery the amazing thing about Holy Spirit you don't you don't have to sell him you just ignore and he walks away Holy Spirit is not a force that is gonna put himself on you. He is a gentleman. That means when he's ignored, he walks away. He always announces his coming, almost never announces his departure. In the book of Acts, we see when the Holy Spirit came, a wind, fire, he announces his coming. But when you look at the life of Samson, you see when Holy Spirit is leaving and Samson didn't even know. And the best way, forgive me for saying bluntly, to get rid of the Holy Spirit is to get, ignore him. When you ignore his tug, when you ignore when your consciousness is being troubled, when you ignore when that thing, and you try to explain it away, you're trying to justify that some of you are good, you throw scriptures at it, but you know you're wrong. You know the tension is there. And no matter how you justify it, and no matter how many people do it, you have to understand when you ignore the tension, you will not have the Joseph in your house as a reporter, but you will never benefit from him as your ruler either. Joseph was raised in Jacob's house, but he was not honored in Jacob's house. Holy Spirit stays there where he's honored, not where people only believe in him. The, the, we, Assemblies of God Church, Pentecostal Church, we have a history of the Holy Spirit. Our history is that the Pentecostal movement started 100 years ago in Azusa Street. That is our heritage. But people of God, we must understand, Holy Spirit doesn't stay where He stayed before. He only stays where He is respected and honored. And the first place we individuals have to honor the Holy Spirit in our lives is to pay attention to your attention. Honor the reporter. Do not ignore the tug. Wrestle with it. Fight with it. But don't ignore it. Go to prayer, go to fasting, do whatever you need to do, but do not silence that voice. Because once you silence it, there will be a time you will want to hear that voice and you will not find it. Joseph's brothers needed Joseph one day, except he was no longer in the house. We need the Holy Spirit. But sometimes we ignore the Holy Spirit because he challenges us to change certain things about our lives. And it's easier for us to get rid of the reporter than to get rid of an issue or a sin in our life. Is everybody still with me? Yeah. Holy Spirit is our reporter. Number two, Holy Spirit is our revealer. The second thing we see about Joseph is that Joseph moves to Egypt. He gets sold for the price of a slave. He goes into Potiphar's home and from the Potiphar's home, he goes into the dungeon, he goes into jail. And then while he is in jail, the Bible says the man upstairs, Pharaoh, he gets a very unique dream. It's something about cows, it's something about weed, it's something about seven, and he has no idea what this dream is about. 
He asks all of his magicians, he asks all of the people who translate dreams, he asks all of the sorcerers in his court, all of the scientists, all of the quote-unquote, the religious people, everybody is asked, anybody could help me to translate the dreams. And the Bible says they all go blank, not knowing how to translate the dream. And in the court, there was a young man who says that you need to bring somebody else who is in the dungeon who can translate your dreams for you. And Joseph comes and Joseph translates the dream that was sent to Pharaoh from God. Now listen, listen to this. God sends a message to Pharaoh that cannot be decoded without Joseph. God sends a message to, to, to Pharaoh, but it cannot be understood without Joseph. So if you don't know Joseph, you will know the message, but not its meaning. The Bible is God's message to you. But the Bible was written with the Holy Ghost, and it cannot be understood without the Holy Spirit. You can know the letter of the Bible, but you will not know the meaning, and you will not get anything out of it without your Joseph. Holy Spirit is the agent that explains and makes the Word of God become, aha, uh -huh, wow, that's deep, that's powerful, that's heavy, revy. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. So the first thing about Holy Spirit is He's a reporter. Many people want to have revelations from God's Word, but it starts with respecting the reporter in your heart. You want God to speak to you through His Word? Learn to honor his voice when he speaks to you through his pastor or through your parents. Learn to honor his voice when he speaks as a reporter. And then God begins to reveal his voice through his word. It's interesting, in the Bible it says the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. If you pay attention close to yourself, you will find out something very interesting. You can't speak a word without breathing. If you lose your breathing, you lose your ability to speak. The reason I'm able to pronounce words is because of my breath. If I don't have a breath, I will not have a speech. God cannot speak to you without the Holy Spirit. It's the breath, the Spirit of God that communicates the words of God to you. When we silence and get rid of the breath and we say, well, we just don't, don't need the Holy Spirit. Next thing that happens, what comes out from the mouth of God becomes gibberish to us. And it's just the same thing as the dream to Pharaoh. I have no idea what that means. Many people know Greek, they know Latin, and they know Hebrew. And they do not know the voice of God. Because to know the voice of God, you don't have to know Greek, you don't have to know Latin, and you don't have to know Hebrew. You have to know Holy Spirit. When you know Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit reveals the Word of God to you. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a revelation. Peter believed in Jesus to be Messiah, not because Peter had a PhD in divinity. Peter believed in Jesus to be Messiah because Peter had a revelation. This week, one of our home group leaders, after a home group, he sent me a text message and he said, he says that after a home group, there was this wonderful young man who is with us right now here. And he says, uh, we were in a car and we were discussing, we were talking and he started to open up and start to say, you know, I really, this is brand new for me, everything that you guys are doing, but I really, really like it. And and as the conversation continued on, a young man gave his life to Jesus Christ on Sunday night in the car. As he gave his life to Jesus Christ in the car and our cell leader led him to a prayer, and our cell leader just walked in. <laughs> and next thing that happened is this young man said, as we were praying, he says, I felt heat, fire in my chest. What was that? The Holy Spirit. You know what causes a person to become a Christian? It's not sin. It's the Holy Ghost. People think, well, because they're so messed up, that's why they're Christians. Oh, no. There's many people who are more messed up and they don't want to do nothing with Christ. What causes you to become a Christian is a revelation. And it only comes through the Holy Spirit. And the reason why some of you are Christians, you may think, oh, well, because of this and that. But in reality, it's because the Holy Spirit lifted something out of your eyes and you saw something that other people don't see. To be a Christian, 
To be a person who understands God, you must know the person of the Holy Spirit. Now stay with me. Pharaoh, before bringing Joseph into the court, Pharaoh has a very tough decision to make. Because on one side, a servant of Pharaoh, who is his cupbearer, he's a chief cupbearer, he comes to Pharaoh and he says, Pharaoh, can I speak to you? He says, I know you have all of these professional people who are trying to help you understand your dream. And permit me to speak to you that uh, many years ago, approximately two years ago, we, uh, me and the other guy in the kitchen over there, he is the main cook, we got in trouble, we got on your nerves. Remember that two years ago? Yes, I do. And out of the anger, you put us in a dungeon, in your prison. Oh yeah, I remember that. And he says that when we got there, the next day, we both had these dreams and they were so confusing, almost as confusing as your dream. This whole confusing dream stuff travels with our court. So it's not just your problem, it's been my problem too. When I was there in the dungeon, I had this same confusing dream and there was this man there who came to me and he understood my dream, explained my dream. And the interesting thing, Pharaoh, is what he said came to pass. Three days later was actually your birthday. And on your birthday, for reasons unknown to you, I already knew that I will be promoted back into my position. And that's exactly what happened. Now, the other buddy of mine, well, it wasn't his lucky day. I don't know what he did to you, but you actually had him executed. He died. And guess what happened? Joseph predicted that. This Joseph is still in the prison right now, in your dungeon. You can um, call him and he will help you with your dream. It's interesting that the person Pharaoh needed to translate his dreams was within his reach, in his own house, except incarcerated. He wasn't somewhere in the other continent. He was not somewhere in the other country. He was right there in his dungeon and sadly, Pharaoh did not even know Joseph's name. Many people have the book, but the Holy Spirit is incarcerated, ignored. And we read it and it's boring and you're pushing yourself to it. You're not getting anything out of it because the person of the Holy Ghost, he is not somewhere in heaven. He is right there. Actually, the Bible says in us, but he is unmute. And many times he is just like Joseph, completely imprisoned. It's important to know the Holy Spirit if we want to benefit from the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? As Pharaoh is standing there and this servant is telling him this wonderful story, there comes another man. He's probably from like LNI or IRS. He comes and he says, Pharaoh, let me remind you, this man that your buddy is talking about, he's actually a sex offender. Did you know why he ended up in Egypt? Because his brother sold him. Now, who would sell his brother? Most likely, he has some dirt around him. Do you know why he's sitting in your dungeon? He tried to rape a woman. Do you know that, Pharaoh? Imagine now you being Pharaoh. You, you heard about a man who did such a crazy things that has helped this man. And then you're hearing also about him that he is a scandalous, controversial, and his reputation is a mess. What would you do? Would you invite somebody into a court with such a bad reputation to give you advice? Or would you say, you know what? Forget about my dreams. <laughs> Let's go on, guys. Pharaoh invites a man with a questionable reputation. The reason why is not because Pharaoh ignored the fog around his name. It's that Pharaoh could not ignore the stories around this man that came from his servant. What we must understand about Holy Spirit is that many times, not just about the Holy Spirit, but God in general. Before you can get to know God in general, sometimes you have to step over the fog and the scandal that religious people or people who are close to Him create. When you want to know the Holy Spirit, you must understand that people who walk with Him many times have a scandal, a controversy, or a fog around their name. Sometimes it's because these people actually commit sins and other times because these people have a position of the enemy who creates controversy to keep you away from being benefited by the Holy Spirit. People always say in our generation, if there is fog, there must be fire. 
But we've been in our church long enough to know we can have fog on the stage without fire. <laughs> you can have fog if you have a fog machine. So the fact that Joseph had fog around his name, it just reveals not because Joseph was actually a sex offender, it's that there was a fog machine in the Potiphar's house called Potiphar's wife. And she created all of that drama and all of that controversy. So when it's right time for Joseph to go to be the prime minister so that Pharaoh would have a stumbling block from inviting Joseph in because he will be offended by his questionable reputation. Is everybody still with me? Many people today say, I don't want to do nothing with Jesus because the people who are close to Jesus are unlike Jesus. If being close to Jesus will make me like him, her, or him, I don't want to do nothing with Jesus. Well, everybody in church is a hypocrite. Well, all of these, you know, Christian people, they're so weird, they're so rude, and they're so mean. Do not let people who are close to Jesus hold you back from getting to Jesus. When the short Zacchaeus came to Jesus and the Bible says that everybody around Jesus was very tall and they hindered him from coming to Jesus. But Zacchaeus was not like one of the people, contemporary humans in the 21st century who got his feelings hurt. The Bible says he ran ahead, found a tree, climbed on the tree and says, you know what? I may never be like you, but I will never let you keep me from Jesus. I'm going to still get to Jesus. We must understand that Christian people are not perfect. We must understand the people Holy Spirit uses are not perfect. But praise God if they are being perfected. We are not perfect. We might have some hypocrisy in us. And we ask you, join the club. There is room for one more. And if you find a perfect church, please, for God's sake, don't join it. You'll ruin it. We are not perfect people, but if you ever did construction and you use those rubber gloves and you did something in the house, you will find something about rubber gloves. They are not eternal. They break quickly. And let's say you go through five gloves during one day to accomplish a project. Do I have the right to make fun of your project because your gloves ripped five times? Of course not. Why? Because what you do is more important than the glove you use to do it. And many times when we see a man of God or a woman of God or a Christian fall or make mistake or maybe the enemy creates some controversy around him, many of us will say, I will ignore everything about Jesus and God and the hand of God because the glove God used has holes. Wait until he starts using you. Joseph had a scandal around him and Pharaoh had to trust the stories and step over the scandal and then he benefited from Joseph's life and all the scandal around Joseph was a pure fabricated lie. You know, same thing happens when we go to the school and to the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Some of you know, like one of my friends, he, a youth pastor friend of mine, when we got involved with the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua and he was really interested in going with us to the Nigeria. He went to his pastor and said, Pastor, you know more about these things. What would you recommend to me? And his pastor said the following to him. He said, there is too much drama and too much dirt, too much controversy around T.B. Joshua. Stay away from him. And the friend, my friend, asked me, he said, what would you say? I said, when we went first time to the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua, when my pastor went for first time, we were fully aware of the scandal around his name. But we didn't go there because we were ignorant of the scandal. We didn't go there because we were ignorant of the controversy. We're also aware that they said that Jesus had a demon. And the people who said that Jesus had a demon actually had diplomas in divinity. And they were very religious. These are not people mentally ill. These are people who are very high positions in a community and religious society. And if they said that about Jesus, why should Jesus' followers expect anything less? We stepped over the controversy. Why? Because the undeniable facts of what God was doing there and in our own lives. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so to know the Holy Spirit, you must make a decision that you will not stumble over a controversy, but step over it. If you stumble over controversy, you might as well take scissors and cut out the Noah story from Genesis. 
because he got drunk and naked. As well, cut out the Abraham story because there was controversy around Ishmael as well. Cut out Samson from the Bible. Cut out also Solomon. Well, just go ahead and cut out the whole thing because every, almost every glove got used somehow, some way was not perfect. Amen? So do not be offended by your neighbor's imperfections. Because until you get close to Jesus, you will soon find out you will need people to be merciful to your imperfections as well. And do not be offended over the smoke. And don't think because there is fog, there is fire. Sometimes there is fog because there is a fog machine. Because there are demons behind it who create a controversy to keep people like you and me who only read the Google and don't watch testimonies and don't read the Bible to keep us away from the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? And we see that's exactly what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh stepped over the controversy. He benefited so much from the gift of Joseph. The first thing about Holy Spirit we learn, he is our reporter. Second thing that we learn is he is our revealer. And the third thing is the Holy Spirit is our ruler. He is our ruler. It's so fascinating to see the fact that he was raised in the house of Jacob, but he ruled in the house of Pharaoh. He didn't rule the house of Jacob in the beginning. He ruled the house of Pharaoh. The dream was not that he will rule Pharaoh. If you remember the dream of Joseph, let me remind to you. The dream was that he will rule his father's house. But his father's house had no respect for him. And the house that had respect for him. I mean, when I read the story, I, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. How can a man who is in such a power, such an honor, invites Joseph, okay, I'm okay with the translating of the dreams. You translate the dream awesome. Joseph, I give you your freedom. I'm going to give you the best house, give you reward, give you a golden chain. Joseph, you're a free man. Let's gather now all of our, you know, home, um, not home, but uh, HR department, what's human resource department of Egypt, and let's hire a person who will be able to oversee the Egypt during these crucial 14 years of our life. Pharaoh, you know what Pharaoh does? He doesn't do any interviewing. He says, Joseph, Joseph, the prisoner, Joseph with a scandalous name, Joseph with a questionable reputation. He says, Joseph, you got the Holy Ghost. You're in charge. The whole country. By the way, here's the ring. Everything. He says, the only difference between you and me is I will still be Pharaoh. But the Bible even says further on that he, Joseph, becomes the father to Pharaoh. And guess what Joseph does? Turns the country upside down. He saves the country from their biggest problem. And when 14 years are over, when they went through the biggest challenge ever, Pharaoh, who surrendered everything to Joseph, became the richest man in the world. How do I know that? Because Joseph made every piece of real estate in Egypt be given to Pharaoh and every breathing human being and animal to be Pharaoh's. What would Joseph do if his brothers would do the same? We are so afraid of the word ruler. Some of us, we, we, we fear because we saw rulers, people who pretended to be rulers. Intimidation, domination, manipulation. And we think exactly like that about Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, he's not going to ruin you when you let him rule. Actually, when all of that is done, you will look back at your life and you will realize those who honor him, he will honor. He is not going to bring your life down. Not one bit. Your fear that he's going to take your favorite toys away, take all of your fun and not let you have sex until you get married and not let you have all the joy and all of these rigid things. When all of this is done, you will begin to see that actually he will elevate you to heights. You have no education, connections or intellect to get to yourself. The dreams you have inside of you right now that you cannot even make sense of how they come to pass. He will one by one, year by year, even if you go through hell, take it, unlock it and always bring you up when you bring him up. The fear of letting the Holy Spirit rule our life because he will take things and kick you out of the throne and sit on the throne and say, you, you be my slave. That fear is not scriptural. When Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come, he used the word paralectos or parakletos, something in Greek that I cannot pronounce. But the meaning of the word simply means helper, advocate, counselor, and comforter. 
the meaning of the Holy Spirit in your life is that he is going to come and when you give him the keys he is not going to ruin your life he is going to rebuild and revive and lift you up not bring you down can somebody say amen I want to challenge you today but Holy Spirit will never force himself on you Joseph after he translated the dream Joseph never said hey Pharaoh can I make a suggestion you should hire me Joseph never brought his resume and says by the way I know you'll be looking for a guy to take the position over Egypt here's my resume please consider me not once Joseph made a suggestion so that Pharaoh will choose him and Holy Spirit waits to be wanted Holy Spirit waits to be invited Holy Spirit he's not gonna push himself if you don't want it he'll remain as incarcerated prisoner and your life will remain a complete mess when you let him take the place he will take you up to places you never dreamed of can somebody say amen he will take you up to places that you beyond your wildest dreams I heard a story this week of a young man who had a very rough childhood grew up in a, in a family all of them were soldiers and never really knew his father because of his activities in the army and everything and um, he won a scholarship to go to this university everything was going well until he started hang, hanging around bad people in the university and next thing that happened is that he lost his scholarship got sent back home and while he was home he found out that his mother was dealing drugs because they were so poor and they had to make ends meet and his mother was started to deal drugs um, they caught him with, with different traffic violations and he really tried to make his life straight and put everything right in his life. Until one day he got into the house and he saw police coming into the house and they searched his car and they found cocaine, a gun and money in his car. And they quickly, you know, made that seem like it was his money, his drugs and his gun because it was in his car and they arrested him. And they labeled a lot of other uh, things on him because there was a lot of cocaine and they made him uh, seem like he was a big drug dealer and everything next thing that happened he was actually threatened that he will have 60 years in prison because of these accusations that they made the problem was actually his mother was the one that placed the drugs in his car when the court day came and they brought all of the evidence his mother came to the court and she testified that she never put the drugs, that those drugs were her son's. So now he literally faced many years in prison because of something he did not do. And he was so frustrated, the court day kept, kept pushing, jury kept, you know, kept looking over the evidence, kept just literally just flipping the whole thing upside down again and again and again, until one day he realized he's not gonna win. But he did not want to plead guilty because it was not his drugs he not, it was not his gun he never owned the gun and it was not his money it, none of the all of the stuff is literally it's it's placed it's staged it's not his and one of the inmates told him about Jesus and he says I know you're worrying about this you want to get out but he says take a moment and pause he says your real problem is not your mom your real, your real problem is not the drugs the gun and also your real problem is you don't have nobody who speaks for you when you go to courtroom you're on your own he says make Jesus your Lord and your advocate and this man accepted Jesus start reading the Bible and came to the place in the Bible where it says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free the next hearing they had he walked in and this is from his words he says I felt like I walked into the courtroom with the creator of the universe as my attorney I walked in with the scripture bubbling inside of me you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free there was nothing new about his case nothing new there was nothing new his mother still testified that it was not her stuff she still everything was still the same except when it came to the verdict the jury said on the account of one we find you not guilty on the account of two we find you not guilty on the account of three we find you not guilty you're an innocent man why the helper came on the scene the Holy Spirit and this is who you need but it starts with listening to him as your reporter getting to know him as your revealer so that you can live with him 
as your ruler fear not his rulership be afraid when you start ruling your life be afraid when demons rule or dominate your life but when holy spirit takes control of your life when holy spirit takes control of the meeting or when he takes control of your destiny listen even if you go through the valley of the shadow of death david says i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me do i walk through the water or through the fire i know i will not drown and i will not die because you are on my side that's why Stephen could look in heaven while stones were falling at him. Why? Because he had the creator of the universe rule and reign. He's man managed his affairs. Let Holy Spirit not be your incarcerated prince, but let him be a reigning, a ruling prince in your life. Give him the control of your life. Some of you, your marriage will change if you just simply stop being in charge. Maybe you're afraid the Holy Spirit will kick you to the curve. He doesn't do that. He didn't do that with Pharaoh. He won't do that to you. If you honor him, he has to honor you back. He's going to honor you. He's going to honor your marriage. He's going to honor your finances. He's going to honor your life. And the people who rejected you, the people who made fun of you, and the people who maybe laid you off, like in Joseph's case, his brothers, those people who said, you, look at you, you're stupid. Your dreams are foolish. Those were the people who came and said, please, please, please give us a loaf of bread. Because when Holy Spirit begins to use you and elevate you, your critics, the naysayers, the haters, they will find themselves in the time of a need because they never allowed the Holy Spirit to become their ruler. Amen. Some of you uh, heard the testimony from the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua. It was similar this week where a young man was working at the poorest job in Nigeria and what he was doing is he was helping people carry their bags to their cars or to their buses. And one particular time he was getting paid very small tips. That's all he was getting paid. The very poor man. And as he was helping to carry one bag, he noticed an elderly woman was crossing the street and a vehicle was just racing through the street and ran her over and in cold blood she died on the street. Street. He dropped the bags and ran to comfort her when the police came. They accused him of killing her. And because of court systems probably maybe being more poor in that country, he sat in jail for over six years if I'm not mistaken. He sat in jail being innocent man at the end of his robe until one day a man came to prison and gave him a wristband from TB Joshua and he says, well this is not like a lucky charm or anything but the man of God carried it and it has anointing. Just, just pray to God that God will help you and God is going to see you through. At night, he has a dream. And in the dream, Prophet T.B. Joshua comes and says, you're an innocent man. That's all. The next day, for reasons unknown to him, they release him from prison. He comes out from prison in prison clothes. He doesn't, didn't even have time to go back to his home. Goes to church on Sunday to testify in prison smelly clothes. And the, 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 the security guard sees him there and he doesn't want to let him into church because he says, man, we don't want no inmates in the, in the church. He says, we don't allow people with mental disorders on Sunday. They're only for Saturday. And so you have to come next Saturday is because you're mentally dis I mean, he looked at him, he's like, you look like you're, you're weird. And, and he took him to the house, the security guard, and let him be washed. Let him be cleansed and he says now you're ready to come in he came he testified the interesting amazing part on a side note when the man testified that the security guard did that to him that he took him in and let him be washed instead of being freaked out that he wore inmates clothes prophet tb joshua right in the middle of the service says we're gonna give to the security guard thirty thousand dollars because this is what he does with the money that he has he helps other people we're just gonna give him more and make him live very comfortable See, that's what happens when Holy Spirit is in charge of your life. You can help somebody take a shower and get 30 G's the next day. Who would not want that? My friends, I want to challenge you, encourage you today. Give Holy Spirit the room. He will take you to places you never dreamed of.